Hi guys, one of the kids that I help out with physics has given me this roller coaster question that involves kinetic and potential energy to solve. Um, the question says um, a roller coaster of mass 300 kilos starts at rest at point A, whose height off the ground is 25 meters, and a little while later reaches point B, whose height off the ground is 7 meters. What is the potential energy of the car relative to the ground at point A? What is the speed of the cart at point B, neglecting the effects of friction and um, energy lost at uh, sound, etc., etc., etc.? So the first part of the question, what is the potential energy of the car relative to the ground at point A? So the first point up here. So basically, this one here is quite a simple question. We have a standard potential energy formula which says the potential energy of an object is equal to its mass times the force due to gravity times the height of the object above ground. And in this case, it's going to be H1. Now, this is quite simple. Just plug in the numbers that they give you for each of these. The mass is 300 kilos. Gravity the, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 and the height they've told us at H1 is 25 meters. So if we put all of those things into our calculator, we get an answer of 73,500. So 73,575 joules. Cool. So that is the answer to the first part. What is the potential energy of the car relative to the ground at point A? Then it asks us, what was the speed of the cart at point B, neglecting the effects of friction? So basically they're saying, assuming no, none of this potential energy is lost to the environment as sound or heat or all of the above. So basically what we first have to do is they've given us a height at B as well. So the first thing we're going to calculate is we're going to calculate the um, potential energy at B. So we're going to just let's separate these. We're going to calculate the at B, the potential energy, which again is equal to mg, and in this case H2. So mass is 300. So the only thing that changes in this case, the potential energy is going to be directly related to the thing, the cart's height. And the height at H2 is 7. So you can see that the cart goes from 25 to 7. So that decrease there is going to be exactly equal to the decrease in potential energy and I mean that as in like the um, the fraction that 7 is of 25 is what the new potential energy is going to be of 73,575. So we find that this potential energy at B is equal to 20,601 joules. Great, so what do we do next? Well, what we can basically assume if we are not take into account any of the energy being lost to heat and sound, and et cetera, et cetera, is that the difference in potential energies between point A and point B, that difference is going to be energy that's been converted from potential energy to moving energy or kinetic energy. So what we're first going to do is we're going to understand that the total energy when the thing is at rest is equal to 73,575. So that is our ET, our total energy. And at B, which is different to point A, this is made up of potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, the kinetic energy is just going to be the difference between the new potential energy 
and the original potential energy, because this potential energy, when the thing, when the card is stationary, is the maximum energy or the total energy. So what we can then find is that the kinetic energy is simply this number, 73,575 minus 20,601. So we find that the EK, this is at B, is equal to... 52,974. 52,974 joules. Great. So now we're on our way to figuring out what the speed of the cart is at B. So we'll just take this up here. So we're well aware that the kinetic energy of an object is related to the square of the object's velocity. So we know that the relationship between kinetic energy and velocity is this one. Energy kinetic is equal to one half mv squared. So what we could do here, we know what the object's mass is. We know what the object's kinetic energy is we only have one variable which we can then use algebra to solve for. So let's enter in what we know. So this is going to be 52974 and that's got to be equal to the mass is 300 and because we're, we have to halve it, v squared. So we can just, we know that 300 on 2 is 150. It's being times by velocity squared. So we're going to divide both sides by it. So we're going to go 5, 2, 9, 7, 4, divided by 150, 300 on 2. And what I'm going to do to get the velocity by itself, I'm going to just square root that entire operation. And what we come out with, um, what we come out with, is a velocity approximately equal to eighteen point eight meters per second to the negative one. So you can see that the velocity at b is related to kinetic energy at b, which is the difference between the potential energies at a, where it's stationary at the beginning, and b, when it's moving because we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So what we then do is we use the kinetic energy relationship between it and the velocity of an object to then basically work backwards to find the velocity after knowing what the kinetic energy is. And that gives us the answer of the velocity at B. Well, I hope that video helped put it in perspective. I'll see you again next time.